Hey everyone, welcome back to Plymouth Argyle. We are into season two now, so start with apology. The capture card actually corrupted the files I was recording for the end of season one, but we did win the title and we are into the championship as League One champions, as you can see here. What it does mean though, is we're building for the future. We're looking to get some new players in to support our championship survival first. And we've got a budget of seven million pounds to do so. Looking at our objectives, we should be able to do the youth development one. We've got, we're bringing in young players all the time. We've already got Green and Jacobs who are pushing for like long-term prospects for us anyway. So we should easily get that bottom one for the long-term. 10 clean sheets in the championship will be really tricky. Cooper's a great keeper, but the championship is a big step up compared to where we were last season. Hopefully Cooper will be protected well with the defenders that we've brought in and the defenders we already had at the club, but we can remain to be seen. Obviously no continental success yet. We'll be looking at those in the near future, hopefully. The board want us to finish mid table in our first season in the championship, which I find quite a difficult aim and getting to the round of 16 in the FA Cup is a bit deluded in my opinion as you could draw anyone in round 3 and quite easily be knocked out straight away. Hopefully we can do that though, we can get to the mid table, we can get a few good results on the board but the aim to stay up. Finally the financial one is another tricky one, sign one crucial player so we've already signed Mengi so that's that bit ticked but make a profit of 8.6 million is going to be very tough. I mean, obviously we've got prize money that will go into that, but I don't really want to sell any of our players. Instead, looking at players to bring in, the first one is Dion Sanderson from Wolves. He's a great player, big prospect for the future. And what we're going to do is, as we did with Mengi, we're going to loan to buy. What it does, it gives us a player that we can use immediately without the outlay of the cash. So out of our 6.8 million, we don't need to spend any of that up front to get him into the club. What how he'll develop whilst he's on loan to us is our benefit, so it's a benefit to play him, and we guarantee his future value at what it is now, really. So we're gonna barter with Wolves to try and get the wages split. 10 grand a week's quite a bit, but we can deal with that. And he's worth about two and a half million, so hopefully we can try and negotiate that down a little bit. But we'll stick firm to 2.45. We try and wiggle it around again. Absolutely no bite. Wolves just want that figure for him. And due to the tension being quite high, I just wanted to get it done and get Sanderson through the door. Next player that was on the books that we wanted to bring in was a backup goalkeeper and Marcus Bettinelli was available on a free transfer. He wouldn't accept any squad role other than crucial. So he might get grouchy as the season progresses, but very able deputy for our guy Cooper. Tried to move his wages down a bit, trying to negotiate down. We eventually did get it just below the 7.8. We got rid of the signing on bonus, but he's a Premier League keeper in his head. Coming from Chelsea last year, even though he never played a game for them, he was on their bench. Try and negotiate his wages. They're not having any of it. The tension was rising in the room. As you can see, his signing on fee, signing bonus has come down. We have one more roll of the dice. And thankfully, we do get our man eventually. I was pushing it. I was keeping an eye on the tension bar every time I offered him something new and he did sign for seven and a half K. So that's another signing through the door, our backup goalkeeper, which is great. He's about the same rating as Cooper. So if we do lose Cooper for injury or if we do have to sell him, then we've got a really good backup here in Bettinelli. Obviously, as he's older, he's 31, he's still got a few years left, as keepers do, but he's not bad. I'm pretty happy with how we've improved here and we've got an able backup to come into the club. The next deal was Sanderson being announced. So with loan deals, you make an offer to the club, but you still have to wait for the player to actually sign. But here he is in the green and very happy with this. I think he's going to be a great player for us in the future and we get to enjoy him for now for absolutely, well, just his wages really. 
and if he does improve and his value increases we will get him for 2.45 million so we're going to look at his stats he's very good physically very good pace good defending so we're going to put him on the stopper just to focus on the physicals and getting those that stand tackle up a bit more the next player to come in was a backup left back so green's going to be my main focus but luke garbert was on a free transfer after being released by luton as was luke berry and they both arrive on free transfers to bolster the squad garbert will be back up left back berry will be back up in the center mid position he can also play at cam really pleased to bring both of them in. good championship experience they're both over 30 but i can live with that another player coming in was a regen he's a portuguese central midfielder free transfer he's 17 years old and i think he's going to be a brilliant prospect for us he's already 70 rated there was quite a few youngsters or freebies that i could have gone for which when i scouted were really highly rated and i just don't feel like the realism will last if we bring in like a uh, 878 rated centre mid in our first season in the championship. Carvalho though, really pleased with his stats, good all round midfielder, could probably do with working on his shooting eventually, but looking at his passing, really pleased with that, I'm going to boost him up. So looking at our deals, Mengi in, Ross has gone out on loan, Bettinelli's come in, Jackson's gone out on loan, Sanderson in on loan with a view to a permanent move, Miller's gone to Casapia for 600k, Luke Berry came in on a free. Garbutt came in on a free. Lindbergh, who was one of our youths, has gone out on loan. Law has moved to Poland for just under 600k. And Carvalho has come in as central midfield cover. Although he'll be pushing for a first team booth, their birth, I'm sure. So our season actually does start in July with an away trip to QPR. Really tricky to try and guess what happens in this season because I think there's so much football to be played. There's a long season, there's some really good teams in there. And when you look at some of the other teams that are in the league, such as Blackburn, Swansea, all teams that should be up there, and add in that the teams that came down from the Premiership, which included Everton. So we will have a trip to Goodison Park this year as part of our league fixtures. We'll start with our team that finished off last season. There's no need to change any of it. Obviously, Bury's in on the left for Azaz, who left. And obviously, Whitaker's gone as well, so Jacobs does start on the right. Chill was playing just behind Clark Harris and it's a tr really tough away day to Loftus Road. Playing on legendary still and I'm expecting quite a challenge here. We do start off with kickoff so we'll get the ball rolling for our championship season. Hopefully we can give a good account of ourselves as we adjust to the new league. Get a few surprise wins maybe on the way but we expect survival. That's our aim and the board wants to get promoted. Unfortunately the first Sideways pass of the attack will go, get, gets given away and Adama can push down on the right hand side. Green's covering over, KK takes it on, gives it to Adama. McGlure comes across the cover, finds Johansson who finds Dykes and after just six minutes of the championship season we are 1-0 down. They moved all of our defence about way too easily there and it's something that we might need to look at where we go back to a three at the back as we had before. As you can see, Kai Kai pulled Green out, Adama pulled McGlure out, Johansson pulled Mengi across, and then Dykes just ran into the big open space. Oh, it should have been saved there by Cooper, maybe. But QPR with their first attack, score a goal, and we're 1 0 down after six minutes. QPR on the attack again as we approach the 20th minute, this time down the right hand side. Hamer's doing really well against Lazovic. Paul, who's on our, on our shortlist, Plays it through again. Mengi gets a toe in there really well. And we can bring the ball away. Hopefully move up the pitch through the gears. Good hold up play by Clark Harris. Who finds Bury. Not only Green took ages to get his run on there. But eventually he does get his run. Butcher plays it through to Chilvers. Chilvers holds it up. And we've moved their defence this time. Clark Harris but he shoots straight at the keeper. So that's one of those chances we need our striker to be better and we ain't going to get many chances in this league and that was a really good one this time Clark Harris drops deep keeps the ball sort of gets it to Butcher Butcher finds, finds Bury Bury finds Clark Harris and this time it's Chilvers through the middle with his left foot he snags the ball and it goes all the way across and it's a poor chance in the end but it was a chance nonetheless Impressed with how the, we've been performing since going a goal down. We've had some good chances and the football's getting better. 
It's going to take some time to adjust though, and hopefully we can do that as quickly as possible. QPR attacking down the right again. The dome has been a pain in the ass the whole time. Into Lazovic. Oh, that's a good save this time by Cooper, and we just whack the ball clear. QPR still with it as we approach half time. Dizel into Johansson. Johansson finds Dykes, but thankfully we close it off. And <laughs> what calamitous defending. Thankfully, Cooper managed to grab hold of the ball. And whilst we do try and come out and attack, we've got nowhere to go. They've got six or seven men back, and half time is on. Thought we might have got a free kick there, but the halftime whistle has blown and we go into the break 1-0 down. We give a good account of ourselves, 43% of possession, we've had two shots. One from Clark Harry straight to keep out and the chill was one that was really poor, dragged across goal. Into the second half now, QPR in possession, we've got about 10 minutes to go. Great challenge there by Sanderson who's come on for Mengi. He brings the ball out, looks inside to Clark Harris. Clark Harris into Randall. Randall finds Luke Berry, who's also come on at Cam. Berry's driving wide. Unfortunately, we just can't get the cross right. Bury's out jumped into Di Carvalho. Oh, and Randall just gives the ball away on the edge of the box. Last dying seconds of the game now as we look to push up the right hand side. Hamer gives the ball away, and that's the full time whistle. So we do lose our first game of the championship season away at QPR. And as we look into August, we've got some really tough fixtures on the horizon. But it's exciting. This is why we wanted to get promoted. We wanted to play these big teams. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next time.